So for the final topic of this episode, we have a top five favorite board game expansions. This was more difficult than I thought it would be. Uh, yeah, same here. Uh, one of the reasons is because I have a lot of expansions that I would believe to be on this list that just haven't hit the table. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because you want to play the base game a few times before you just throw the expansion into it. Right. But we get so many new games that we're always playing new games rather than playing old games with expansions. Right. So that's very saddening. Yes. But we're going to start this out, and uh, yeah, I guess, um, I don't know, who wants to who wants to end it? Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll go first. Who has the biggest surprise sure. as their number one? <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. But mine's probably not a surprise. We okay. might share one. I know. I know your one. number one. Oh, did you read it on my page? Here? No, but I know what it is. Oh, okay. All right, Matt. Matt will begin with you because I think I might have a surprise. But, okay. Uh, it's not really a surprise, but I don't know. We'll see. Let's okay. Yeah. Matt first. Okay. My number <laughs> one. Uh, let's see here. I'll start with well, number five. Sorry. Yeah. yeah sorry. Number five. Um, this probably will be on Tim's, but uh, I'll put it on here too because I do like the expansion for role player. The uh, the monsters and. So, what not monsters yeah. and minions yeah monsters and minions uh i didn't really care for the overall monster we've talked about it before but i just really enjoyed the fact that it had the uh the extra monster deck and it allowed you to use your dice to do other things besides you know just getting the ability you can you can fight some of the monsters in the middle and get a little bit of loot and stuff with it so yeah that actually would have maybe made my list if i remembered but I forgot about it, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> I didn't have it until I got over here and saw it. So oh, actually, gotcha. that, that was the one I was talking about when I mm -hmm. said, oh, I just remembered one. Yeah, so. but you're right. Uh, yeah, they they could have just taken out the, the boss. It would have been probably even better. Yeah. Yeah, I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, what's your number five? It's going to be his number one. Uh, five for me was uh, King Tokyo Power Up Expansion. Uh, I just feel that it uh, it adds a lot to the... The, the auto base include. game, yeah, it's yeah, it has to be auto include. Even if you're playing with new players, you know, just include it. It makes each of the monsters actually feel a little different. Otherwise, everybody has a monster, but you're really all the same. You know, I guess you differentiate yourselves by buying cards um, for uh, your energy, but otherwise, everybody's the same. And this kind of makes you feel a little different. Yeah, you know what? That's one of the first ones I thought about when we talked about this. And then I thought about it more, and I was like, it really isn't my favorite expansion because I feel like the game isn't as fun without it. So it's almost an auto-include. So would I consider that an expansion or more of, like, the base game It should have been in the base game. Yeah. Right. So that's why I kind of did not have it on this list, even though I do like it. It just doesn't seem like an expansion anymore to me. Mm -hmm. So... Matt, you like it, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. And it, this one, uh, whenever I was researching, this one was brought up probably the most from yeah. what I saw. My number five is Carcassonne Traders and Builders. <clears throat> because oh. I feel like Carcassonne as a base game is light. Mm -hmm. It's a very gateway-ish. You add in Traders and Builders, and now it becomes this game that actually has a, lo a lot more going on, but not a lot added. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with this one? Have you played it? No, I have actually not played it. I've only played the played base it? game. Uh, not unless you played it with me. No. So in Carcassonne, you're building cities, right? And one thing that it does add is the fact that the city tiles that they put into there have um, symbols on them sometimes. I think there's like five goods, if I remember. So like, like you know, the standard trade goods kind of deal, like silk. I don't know. <laughs> I can't even Brick, think of them offhand because they're like non-thematic. You know, it's right. thematic, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. So there's like five different symbols that you can collect. So as you place the tile, you will get a token off to the side that you keep. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most of each token receives 10 points. So even though you don't want to build into a city, you might put it there and stuff because you want to get those icons. You know what I mean? Like to get those tiles or whatever. Right. So that's pretty cool. It also comes with a builder. When you have the builder, you put the builder meeple into a city. And if you build onto that city, you get to take another turn and put another tile out. No. So that's actually pretty cool. And the last thing I think it adds is, other than a ton of new tiles, is the pig. And the pig you actually put onto a farm you already have a farmer on. And it increases all the cities by plus one point. So if you wanted to contest a farm, <laughs> wow. it makes it even crazier. Right. I don't know what they've done with the newest version of Carcassonne. This is obviously the Rio Grande version, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that they've taken pieces out of it for the new one or something. I don't know. 
but so I really like it. It's it it was the like I played Carcassonne for a while. It was my favorite game when we first started getting into the hobby. And then other games kind of shadowed it because it's like, wow, these gamer games. And then I bought that expansion. I was like, what? Okay, cool. This actually brought it back up for me. So anyway, that's it. My number four, which after looking at this probably should have been my number five because it's really just kind of a arbitrary thing. But I put Smash Up on here just because I buy them just to get them. Uh, <laughs> that's more of an honorable of, mention at this them. point. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but uh but yeah, so I don't know. And any favorite uh, faction or uh, bundle? Uh, the bundles, the my two favorite ones was the um, cease and desist because that had like the Game of Thrones, Star Trek, Star Wars, and Transformers. Uh, like ripoffs. And then the other one was just funny. It had like uh, Grumpy Cat and My Little Ponies. I think it was called. Actually, I wrote it down. Pretty pretty smash up. Oh yeah, I got that one. Yeah. Cool. Do you have all the expansions? Uh, not all of them. <clears throat> I'm probably only missing like four, though. Gotcha. <laughs> only four. <Yeah>. Only four. <laughs> only That's kind of like Carcassonne. I'm only missing like four, <laughs> but I have like twelve. All right, number four for me uh, is Seven Wonders Leaders. Uh, the reason I like that is uh, it kind of gives you additional <laughs> paths, uh, additional combos that you, you know you can go for. It uh, is also pretty. Um, Seven Wonders is pretty light in itself. And uh, it uh, plays pretty fast, and it continues to do the uh, do that with this expansion. So it doesn't like bloat a uh, game that is supposed to be kind of fast and mm -hmm. and easy. So yeah, yeah, I liked it. That was a pretty good one. Uh, my number four, right? Yeah, yes. four yeah. is role player, <laughs> monsters <laughs> okay. and minions. Uh, this added so much to the game. It kind of breaks the th theme of what you're doing but it's okay. Right. <laughs> you know, you're like building an RPG character. You're not fighting during that time, but whatever. Mm -hmm. the, the, be the best thing about it is the character sheets that you it, like to put all your scores on at the end of the game. Right. They're completely worthless to the game. I mean, it's just non unnecessary, but it was like my favorite part. Uh, past that, I like Matt said, I love the fact that you actually fight bad guys throughout it. The fighting the boss at the end is anticlimactic, I think, because it just ends up to being one big roll for each person, whoever rolls the best. <laughs> that kind of bleh. But the uh, the boost dice, I thought were awesome mm -hmm. addition yes. to the game. That is awesome. Forgot about those. <clears throat> they're non-colored, but at the same time, you know, they're higher numbers. Yeah. So that's so good. So good. And then the um, the scrolls that they added into the uh, the market, mm -hmm. where you like buy them and they happen. Yep. Those are great. Man, so many cool stuff. So much cool stuff they added to that game that was already awesome. Yeah. So, yep. That's my number four. Yep. Good times. Uh, my number three is Survive Escape from Atlantis. Um, I just said them all because <laughs> it comes, uh, yeah. you can add the sixth player. They're which, all pretty small. So yeah, yeah, they're all, it, they're all pretty <laughs> it's small. It's like one big expansion together. <laughs> right, yeah. So the one... Uh, what, squids and dolphins. Squids and, and dolphins, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's one more beyond that that... I can't remember what it was, but it doesn't matter. Uh, just get them all. Yeah, just get them all. Yeah, the six player is a lot of fun. It's complete chaos. So yeah, but yeah, it's a quick and easy one. Cool. Uh, number three for me uh, is actually a uh, Castle Panic, the Wizard Tower. Um, if you played Castle Panic, it, it might get a little samey. It's pretty easy, but uh, adding the Wizard Tower kind of revitalized the game a little bit for us. Uh, it made it harder. It uh, changes one of your towers into a wizard tower, which you have to protect that one, you know, over all the others. Because if you lose that, you lose the cards that it gives you access to, which are, you know, a lot better than the regular cards. Um, because it also adds in uh, minions and, and whatnot, monsters that are more powerful. That I played this one with you, right? I don't believe so. I think we played just regular without the wizard tower. We should go back and sure? play it. I think so. <clears throat> Maybe so. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? No. Sorry, That's I didn't it. mean to interrupt <laughs> you, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure. Maybe Eric's just told me we need to play it a thousand times. Yes. I knew this probably... one would be on Eric's yeah. Yeah. list. Yeah. Is that what you thought his number one was? No. Oh, okay. No. We're, you're yeah. going to predict it before it happens. Yes. Here we go. My number three is Mage Wars Domination. Wow. So Domination, uh, Mage Wars is already an awesome game. Obviously, mm. it's a little bit of an investment. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. But uh, what's cool about it is that it adds a uh, modular board to the game. 
which I thought was fantastic. So you have all these different setups that you can set up rather than just have the four by three, you know, arena. That was great. But the domination mode is by far super good because, you know, even though I like the idea of killing the other person's mage, adding like that point control system thing, like you would see in domination modes and first person shooters. That's my favorite type of uh, PVP style map mm -hmm. is domination or capture the points and stuff. And I thought it was awesome. And it really, really worked well with two players or four players, two on two barring <laughs> bad decisions, but on Jake's part, but uh, the game itself though, domination is just a fantastic addition to it. So that it's, yeah, it was awesome. What was that? Your number three, number three. Yeah. So my number two, where'd it go? Oh, Did you right all here. like that, by the way? Even though it's probably the first time you played it. Yeah, I, yeah, I it was like fun. That. It's just uh, it takes a while to get the rolls down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, it was fun. Cool. Yeah, it, it it's uh, it kind of like you described. It is like a a miniature game, you know, in a sense. Yeah. So, and we played that one as uh, teams. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, my number two is Shadows Over Camelot. Was it Merlin's Path? Yep. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this one you get some new knights, which is no big deal. But uh, they had some new black cards, which was the Seven Witches. Uh, they are super, super brutal. Uh, but then it also, anytime you make a move, you, you're drawing from this deck to see if Merlin's going to walk with you. Uh, and he'll give you, you know, good effects and stuff like that. But I think you could also have to be forced to fight stuff. Uh, yeah. So it, it was interesting. Um, but the biggest thing was the fact that they brought out the two traders. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, with, like with the six seven, players. Yeah. Is it six? Or is it eight? Maybe, Maybe it's seven eight. to eight players. Well, eight players, you're guaranteed. Yes. Okay. If you're going by the rules of the game. The other thing is, uh, even though you glazed glazed over the um, the knights, it's cool because it gives you a second copy of every knight. Yes. Oh. But unfortunately, I feel like one power on each knight is better than the other power. Right. So there's not much of a choice, which is, I think, why we started doing the roll the D6. One, two, three, you're that copy. Four, five, six, you're the other copy. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, some of those will not get played. Right. Ever, right. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. That was a great one. I kind of considered this one. Um, mostly because the Merlin deck. The Merlin moves right. deck. I think oh. that's probably the best thing about it. I don't know if I like that part of it. but <clears throat> oh, You don't? But Merlin's <laughs> awesome. Oh, no. Merlin itself is awesome. Just You uh, can't just throw that in the game with no repercussions. Yeah. Though. <laughs> just movement and you don't move. It's like, ah. Oh. No, I agree. Those are kind of garbage. Maybe, yeah. maybe the like, uh, yeah, maybe they should have did something where you can spin cards to, to allow it. it to happen, mm -hmm. to counter it, which would actually work really well for the trader. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah, I'm, like, I totally need to get here, guys. Yeah, yeah. Dumps a bunch dump, of high numbers. Or, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, keep going. Uh, number two for me is uh, Lords of Waterdeep, <laughs> Scoundrels of Schoolport. School port, yeah. Uh, it's been a while since we played this one, so I can't uh, recollect a lot of what's in it. I remember it, um, it had the extra board, it added the corruption uh, mechanic to it, but uh, I remember it added a lot to an already good game, so uh, we definitely enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it's a great expansion. I, I considered this one as well because I really like Lords of Waterdeep. Mm -hmm. It might add almost too much to the game, because it does dramatically increase the time length. Right. But the corruption thing is brilliant. Yeah. Mm. That was my my favorite part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I shortlisted that one. <clears throat> yeah. Well, going off of that, my number two is the expansion for Champions of Midgard. Uh -huh. And that's Valhalla. Now, All right. similar to basically Lords of Waterdeep, Lords of Waterdeep came out with <clears throat> that one, but it's actually two expansions together. You know, so right. like the skull port and the, mm -hmm. the scoundrel things, but, uh, champions of Midgard came out with two expansions. I bought them together as the Kickstarter bundle, but I'm going to speak only about Valhalla because I feel like this is what I like. It's awesome. Oh yeah. This is absolutely fantastic. Lords of Waterdeep. I liked a lot better than champions of Midgard, but champions of Midgard with Valhalla almost, I think might put it above lords of water deep that's kind of how it worked out for me uh champions of midgard <laughs> was, was okay for me but uh adding in valhalla yeah uh, yeah that kind of propelled it a, a little bit more so 
Yeah, my biggest my biggest thing about all the expansions for for champions is the fact that now you have a reason for your guys to die mm -hmm. because they die. Or you get something for it, for it anyway. Yeah, they yeah. die. You get tokens, and you use those tokens mm -hmm. to buy pretty much in game scoring and items or in the game scoring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or uh, you and it comes with like the leader die, right? And you can get it back through buying one of those cards. The leader die is pretty cool, although I kind of wish they weren't tied to a specific person well uh the leader die uh, depending on if you roll a certain symbol gives you that uh benefit for your person so it, it kind of makes you a little bit different or have that ability that someone else doesn't have right but your person already had a built-in difference anyway mm. you know what i mean like so like it would be cool if right now it's this guy has a special power with his leader die that has a special power right but if you had six characters that the leaders could just float between now you have a crap ton of uh, combinations whereas now you just have six right well, or five so. or mm -hmm. whatever i think it's six uh and then they added some other dice they added like the shield dude and the berserkers and the berserkers great 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 addition mm -hmm. like i think at this point valhalla is a must add for me yeah i'll play it without it no only i would say sad. the only problem uh <laughs> adding all the expansions is how we did anyway is it uh same thing as right yeah, it greatly Lord increased Lord. the time i think two players it it was like a three-hour game or something yeah yep but, but it, ball yeah, was awesome. it was good yeah so good anyway matt honorable your... mention yep honorable mention what uh, you got? my honorable mention was actually valhalla <laughs> just because i heard you all talk about it <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> and i, I remember like, hearing I would, I would it, uh yeah. when you all played it finally but I, I missed that session or something and uh i just thought it sounded like a lot of fun so no, yeah it was good <laughs> that was my honorable mention you just yeah. no. e eventually eventually when we do this segment into the pit yeah we're gonna take champions of midgard with and without the expansions and Lords of Waterdeep, with them, we were gonna play them all in one night, mm -hmm. and then uh, talk about them, pit them against each other, because right. it's thematic to the name of the show. If right. you like metal, mosh pits, etc. Mm -hmm. Eric, what's your honorable mention? Well, I had a couple, and uh, a lot of these uh, might, you know, they're part of them anyway. Is 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 there because I have them? I believe that uh, they would add to the game enough where it would make my top five. Just haven't got them to the table or played them. <laughs> So, uh, one of them being um, Viticulture, the Tuscany expansion, which we've played the Central Edition that comes with parts of the Tuscany expansion. Um, and we've actually not played it just base game, but it seems like uh, that expansion added quite a bit to it. That's exactly what Matt was talking about earlier. Yeah. It's like, do I add that? Right. Because we're technically playing a game that has it built into it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why I put it here in my honorable <clears throat> mention. You know, it has the mamas and the papas, which you know, differentiates how you start the game. Uh, it gives you more cars. It's, uh, yeah, so it's also modular, I guess. Um, I know Tuscany is, with the Essential Edition, I'm, I, I wasn't sure if it was modular as well. Like no, you can add the Essential it. Edition, it doesn't even mention them being variants, I think. Okay. They're yeah. just in, integrated into the rules. So uh, additional <laughs> uh, ones that I have on here is Terramisca, Fire and Ice. Um, it does change the order track. Um, where in the base game, how it works out is whoever, uh, passes first is the first player on the next round. And then it just goes in turn order from there. It changes it where now it kind of ma matters where you pass. Uh, if I pass, I'm going to go first. Well, if I'm the first to pass, I'm going to go first next round. And then whoever passes next is actually going to be the, the second, you know, person that goes. Yeah. Uh, besides that, it has, a uh, uh, six different, uh, uh, people that are, or not people, but uh, species. I don't know. I forgot the name. But uh, different players that you can add to the game. So I think it adds a lot of replayability uh, to it already. Also has new maps and uh, four other end game scorings that can be interchanged in. Uh, also, uh, Marco Polo uh, or Voyages of Marco Polo Agents of Venice has two additional modules five new characters which all, all the characters were pretty nice and uh it has a fifth player just haven't made it to the table so i would imagine that's going to be up there once we play it that's what i thought his number one was going to be <clears throat> yeah. oh yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah. whoa it's blind it, now I, I didn't know that uh he hadn't played it and it uh, wasn't up for <laughs> for <yeah>. running <laughs> but it made here it here in my honorable mention anyway well i've got three and two of them are really small so the first one is this is my honorable mentions 
Carcassonne, the Phantom expansion, it is simply one meeple for each player, and it is an acrylic meeple, so it's see-through of your color. Mm -hmm. What's cool about it is it acts just like an old meeple. You put it out whenever, but you can put it out in addition to your other meeple that turn, and it can go on a different feature. Oh. So you, you build that, you know, you get that really awesome city. Mm -hmm. But you're like, man, I really wanted to put a farmer down. Right. Bam. Both at the same time. That is fantastic. It's such a small concept, and I actually kind of wish it was included in the game. The base game, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it is really good. Uh, but it's so small that I didn't really consider it a, on this list mm -hmm. because of it's really just a tiny little micro expansion. <clears throat> The second one is also kind of the same. It's the first extension to pitch car because it adds the jump. <laughs> <laughs> that is phenomenal. The game is great. <laughs> then you add a, a ramp and everything just goes nuts. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yes. The, you know, it becomes this like actual race or it, it starts off as an actual race. Then you add the jump and then it becomes like uh, arcade version. Yeah. Who can, who can stay on? Yeah. Who can stay on? Yeah. So super good. The third one I was super conflicted on, so I wanted to mention it, but I wasn't sure it would even make a top 10 for me. And that's the first expansion to, or the only expansion to the original Dice Town. I had, actually, I had that on my short list. Uh, I, I probably should have put it up there, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the reason I put it as an honorable mention. By the way, it was renamed Wild West Expansion. Oh. Uh, but for the new edition of it. <clears throat> the reason I put it on here is because I'm not sure how much I like the base game. And so this expansion no. just fixes something. And I don't really mm -hmm. consider something that fixes something for me to be a great expansion. It's fun. Oh, I like it. Mm -hmm. It's great. You know, but I won't play it without it. Sure. That makes it a good expansion. Mm, yeah, but it's not like it took a game I really liked and made it better, mm -hmm. which is what I consider a great expansion, not a patch. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's... Hold on. Yep, Carcassonne. Because, like, Carcassonne Traders and Builders. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the game without it because it's such a great light um, gateway game. Mm -hmm. But then you add Traders and Builders, and it kind of makes it better and shifts it into, like, a little bit more competitive. Mm -hmm. Puts a little bit meat meat on it. But I can do either one. Whereas right. Dice Town, I don't feel like... like that's, that's the other reason why I didn't add Power Up from... Uh, King of Tokyo because mm -hmm. I feel like it's auto include. So is that really a great expansion? Well, I guess they didn't fix anything. It was broke though. Yeah. Not saying that Dice it, Town is broke, but the concept changes dramatically mm -hmm. from you can get totally screwed each round to yeah, you might get a little bit of handouts. Yeah, you, you can get second place. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm conflicted on if I like it a lot, but I wanted to mention it. So yeah. And that, you know, there's another one, man, what was I just thinking of? Oh, the Orleans expansions. I can totally oh. tell you that I might add, end up adding some of those on here if I ever buy. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Considering one makes it a cooperative game. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Changes the whole game. Right. <laughs> that is my favorite type of expansions, by the way. Either mm. add a lot more of what, the same or, you know, shake the box up. So. Yeah. Anyway, Matt, what's your number one drum roll? Dice Town. Wild West. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. You no, <laughs> yeah, it's nice down Wild West. That's I why do, you're quiet. <laughs> I, I do enjoy the game, I guess. Uh, but no, it. I, I guess I see what you're saying, that it fixed problems. because. But that's also why I put it on here. Because the Indian die, I really don't care about. Mm -hmm. But the fact mm -hmm. that the second player can get something. And they yeah. did add the outlaws and uh, the reward posters and stuff. Uh, they added the different ranch uh, abilities with the progressive point building and stuff like that. So, uh, I don't know. And, and, you know, they added just random, you know, whatever, however many cards. But uh, the second place thing was the biggest one because nothing was a bigger bummer than coming in second. Yeah. And uh, they allowed you, you, you to really at least go for get it. something, mm. you know, for coming in second on this one. So, yeah. yeah. My number one. I, yeah. I, totally I, I didn't mean blessed. to steal all your thunder. No, on that, I, but I, I would probably jump. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, take out seven seven wonders leaders and put that as my number four if I remembered it. But yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It kind of makes it hard if you don't own the games and you played an expansion, right? So, so I can't I, look at my shelf and be like, oh, what <laughs> what expansions do I have? Yeah, and like I got on Board Game Geek and totally sorted by expansion to base game. Mm. But then you're like, how do you sort it? Do you sort it by what the community thinks is the best to worst? And like, 
you could go literally a hundred pages before you get to some of these expansions we're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. So unless, unless you own it and it's on your shelf or you've just played the crap out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, number one, number one. What, what do you think it is, Matt? Oh, yeah, oh no, that's right here. I, I thought it would be the Marco Polo. <clears throat> All right. So one night yeah. ultimate werewolf. <laughs> <Something>. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, champions of Midgard Valhalla. It hit oh. my number one for me as well. Well, not as well, but it was up there for me. So number one. Anything you want to add, or are we already talked? No, about we kind of. I kind of added what I needed to you uh, when you were talking about it. But yep. yeah, I, I, I oh, this is exciting. I, like, I, I, I actually... changed the game from, and for me, it changed the game that I didn't really care about to a, a game I liked. I guess, and I guess that's why it made it uh, to number one. That's fair. All right, so what do you think my number one is? That's actually interesting that we ended on this. Because mm -hmm. I don't know if you're going to guess it, actually. No, is it the know. Nation's Dice Game? No, I like that <laughs> expansion. I don't think it's, like, the best ever. Mm -hmm. Like, I could t I could play the Nations without it and be okay. Right. And I do like the expansion. But, you know, it, it's definitely not in my top ten of awesome expansions. It is really good. Not trying to say it's bad. But there's a lot of expansions out there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. Unless it's maybe the Mage Knight stuff, but that's all the guesses I got. Anything for you, Eric? Nah. It is the World of Warcraft Burning Crusade expansion. Ah. Okay. Yeah. This added a dumb amount of stuff to the game. Mm. And then everything I like about WoW, the board game that I've talked about, is pretty much came from this expansion. You know, like it added the new heroes or whatever. It added monsters and quest lines and all that stuff. But it added the fact that it had dungeons in it. Right. Which is insane to me because the game that was already doing a fantastic job of simulating like this like quick. I say quick. Right. Because it's not. It's not <laughs> quick not, over eight hours quick. Well, it's not quick. Like it's not a campaign style game is what I mean. Right. Like in one, one play session. Really, <laughs> for really most long people, play session. Yes. Yeah. You know, 10 to 14 hours or whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's an epic sized game, but it's not like you're playing 99 quests like in Gloomhaven or whatever right. over the past, over the three year period. Mm -hmm. So in one play session, it does an accurate job of mimicking an MMO and it was missing a lot of cool stuff like the, the idea of raids and stuff like that. That's not in there, but the fact that you can visit dungeons and like dungeon dive in it and you get flying mounts and all this other stuff. And the fact that it added tons of cards to what's already there. So it has a lot of variety. Man, the dungeons really just solidified it for me. That was the one thing that I was like, oh, and the other thing is it added the ability to, which you could have did this anyway, I guess, but you're not limited to 30 rounds to the game. Because mm -hmm. in the base game, you played 30 rounds, and if you don't, no one killed the boss, you just PvP'd it out. Right. Which I thought was kind of dumb. But you kind of had to do that. It added new character powers and stuff, and the fact that you can, it added enough stuff so where you can spec out each character totally different each time you play it. Oh man, yeah, such a great expansion. A lot of cards. It had a lot of stuff. So, yep. Anyway, that's the wow, Burning Crusade. Nice. I don't know. Have you played? Did you play base game at all or no? No, we just played it with the uh, Burning Crusade. <clears throat> maybe or one, I did. Maybe one day <laughs> we'll go back. And I will just play strip it everything game. out. We'll yeah, play vanilla and just play vanilla WoW. <laughs> and the next day. No, because like, the next day, play, <laughs> and then we'll have uh, in the pit with it and Starcraft. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. I, th I think that if we played a four player game of vanilla WoW, we can do it in six to seven hours. Yeah. All right. More importantly, we should do Starcraft versus like uh, uh, Twilight Imperium or something. Yeah. Now, those have been talked about a thousand times, but whatever. So that's our uh, top five favorite expansions. Obviously, we have not played every game in the world. Right. We haven't even played all the games released this year. We probably never will. <laughs> no. The 5,000 something games. And uh, there's just tons of expansions out there. So yeah, it's all subjective, obviously. Mm -hmm. But that is our top five favorite board game expansions. Anything else before we wrap this episode up? That's it for me. Should have put been being boozled on here. Be <laughs> being boozled, the yeah, expansion. The expansion. 